a new picture. The whole gang's together. With the tension in the house calmed for now, and dinner uneventfully behind us, we're all hanging around together, as we're now under three days left. Nathaniel, do you have to be in a robe, like, the entire time, though? Like, you never want to wear clothes, ever? It's never, ever. All right. It's a little like a slumber party, even though I haven't been to one of those since I turned 13. The name of the game is I Never. When it's your turn, you must state something that you have never done. Oh, uh, not never have I ever. Like, I've never ridden an elephant? The idea is to pick something that you haven't done, but that you think the rest of us have. So, probably no elephants. Usually this is a drinking game. But if some of you don't care for alcohol, that's what the chocolate peanuts are for. Well, that sounds great. Each of us has a small bowl containing six chocolate-covered peanuts. If you have done what the speaker never has, eat a peanut. And if you're not sure it counts, it counts. Whoever runs out first loses. Which will probably be you. Perhaps. However... He holds up a finger in the air dramatically. I have never cheated on a lover. <coughs> I may have had more than one at the same time, but everyone involved was aware of the situation and the rules. That's not cheating. Everyone was... What has Linz been up to? There's a moment of silence while everyone looks at each other. Finally, Alvin shrugs and takes a peanut. Ah, uh, so that was directly directed at him. Uh. Alvin. There was this girl. We went out a couple of times, nothing serious, and she got all crazy. She started telling people what I was going to do, like it was her decision without even asking me. She picked fights and then came running to me to protect her. So I made it very clear that I was not her property. In public. With her best friend. How should Janet respond to this information? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we're on team Bradley, right? So... Since they're having arguments constantly, we'll scold him. But... I'm like... I mean, there's probably a better way to handle that situation, but I can kind of get it. That's awful. If you were mad at her, you should have just broken up with her honestly. Ugh. She was crazy. She probably wouldn't have listened. Some girls just don't know how to mind their own business. Hmm. So, I suppose it's my turn. Well... I have never snogged a man. See, now we're using English things, and now- Oh, I, of course, they're still under, like, British rule here. There's no America. Okay, now I can understand my confusion a little bit. Alright. Right. Well, I'm glad Janet asked, so I don't have to explain. What is snogged? Alvin and Lynn stare at me. Nathaniel covers a smile with his hand. It's, um, you know... Kissing. With tongues. Poor Raphael had to be the one to explain it. Oh. Oh! What a funny word. Well, then I've never done that either. With a grandiose wrist flourish, Linz takes a peanut from his bowl. No one looks terribly surprised, although Bradley rolls his eyes a bit. You next. Very well. I have never driven a motor vehicle. Everyone else, except Raphael, reaches for a peanut. I don't have a car, but I took driver's ed, so that means me as well. Why not? Some people find cars interesting in themselves, but I never did. If I need to go somewhere, I can get someone to drive me. Usually. You've been quiet, Bradley. Your turn. I'm not sure what's safe to ask. Safe? Well, you're a... Girl. A good girl. That just means I've got more to be curious about. Okay. I've never worn makeup. Well, that's me then. 
Lens, Albin, and Raphael reach for peanuts as well, but not Nathaniel. Okay. I suppose the rest of them have dressed up for Halloween. <laughs> We're not gonna check, though. So, my turn. What should Janet say she's never done? Oh, this is interesting. She probably just save. Bradley? Five. There we go. Isn't that cute? Their eyes close when you load. And now we actually have Bradley's face. We know we're on his route. So, so far, so good. Oh, I mean, kiss a girl is, like, so obvious for, like, Albin and Linz. Possibly Nathaniel. Broken a bone is probably a good one for Bradley, since he's a football jock and so forth. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. I've never broken a bone. Looking around, I see Bradley, Albin, and Linz taking peanuts. Okay. Any interesting stories? Well, there was this kind of steep hill in the neighborhood. We used to ride our bikes down it and see how fast we could go. Then I had this idea about making a ramp at the bottom to see if I could take off. And it worked. Kind of. Except I didn't make anything to land on. What a boy. How about you? I fell down some stairs. I caught myself badly. Distal radius fracture. Which means a broken wrist. I wonder if he knows I know that, or if he just doesn't care if people understand what he says. Alvin? He shakes his head. Nothing interesting. So I... That leaves me. There's a long pause while his eyes flicker back and forth. I have never... We wait for it. Worn pink socks. <laughs> Who's wearing pink socks right now? Everyone stares at him. What? I haven't. I'm not absolutely certain whether I have or not. I would never pick them out for myself, but my parents probably put me in something pink as a baby. I assume I'll be the only one, but as I take my peanut, I notice that someone else is as well. Bradley? I'm not so good at doing laundry. That's the end of the first round, then. Linz and Albin are tied for last, which, with each having only two peanuts left. Nathaniel hasn't taken any peanuts at all. Hmm. Albin and Linz exchange glances. Are they, like, gonna try and gang up on Nathaniel now? Or are they trying to get rid of the other person? I have never spray-painted my initials on the outer wall of a government building. Albin takes a peanut. I have never worn glasses. Well, Linz inclines his head. Touche. And reaches for a candy. To my surprise, Nathaniel does as well. Do you have contacts? No. When I was small, I used to borrow my father's reading glasses. How cute! Linz and Albin are tied, each with one peanut remaining. And so it falls to you to cast the deciding vote. Perhaps. However, I have never drunk absinthe. Ooh, he got him. Bradley looks confused as Linz and Albin sigh in unison and then turn on him. <sighs> <sighs> no one's done that. Your turn. Uh, I have never ridden a horse? Neither have I. I don't hate horses, but I've never found them as exciting as some girls do. Aw man, I love horses. Nathaniel takes a peanut. No surprise. So does Raphael. And so does Albin losing the game. I didn't think you were the horsey type. It was my... it wasn't my idea. He stands up abruptly, kicking over the empty peanut dish. Of course, he had to get kicked out by Bradley. This is a stupid game anyway. What a sore loser. He walks away, and no one even comments on it. I guess he does that a lot. I think that's the end of our evening. 
Ooh, 10 hours, well, a little under 11 hours left of the second day. It's Monday morning. I am alone. Bradley is not a prisoner anymore, but he's still staying in the other bedroom. I ought to be in my dorm room, smelling Vanessa's hairspray and getting ready for class. Unlike some people, I don't leave my homework to the very last minute, so it wouldn't take long. Has she reported me missing by now? Have they called my parents? Are the police looking for Bradley? Has time even passed in that universe because you've gone back in time in this one? It's 1984 here. If whatever sent us here also sent us through time, then maybe when we get back it'll still be the day that we left, and we will never have been missing at all. Of course, Bradley's sister never came back. I stand up. Yawn, stretch. I slept through the night, but I don't feel completely rested. I blame the dream. I was in a dark forest at night, but not like the forest around here. This was more like a Louisiana swamp, with wet ground and hanging moss swaying in the breeze. Every path looked alike. Everywhere I went, I couldn't find my way out. I couldn't tell if I was walking in circles, or if the forest went on forever. Then up ahead in the distance, I saw a glimmer of light. I knew it was probably just a will-o'-the-wisp, so I ignored it, but it kept coming closer, until it was a giant fireball rushing towards me. And then I woke up. Obviously, my subconscious feels trapped here. Oh, obviously. There are worse places to get stuck. It's a nice house, we have plenty of food, and the people are alright most of the time. But I want to go home. I want to be in my room with my books and my music and just relax and recharge. I want to feel centered. Here I feel like I'm on stage and I can't get off and the audience is watching my every move. We're not much more than strangers. What do they think of me, really? Am I annoying or stupid or weird? I've been trying to learn to be more social this year. I've spent my weekends talking to people, going to parties, even this date. But when the weekend is over, it should be back to school, back to normal. If I had work to do, I'd feel better. Well, I can't just sit here and stare at these blank walls all day. I make my way to the kitchen to prepare my breakfast. Good morning. Is there anything I can get for you? No, I'm fine. You know, you shouldn't have to cook for everyone all the time. Oh, I don't mind. Still, it's not fair to make you do all the work. How about I make dinner for everyone tonight? I can do some good spicy Indian food. I don't know if Nathaniel has the ingredients for that. I'll improvise. That should keep me busy for a while today. I'm not a great cook, but I know a lot of ways to spice up vegetables and rice. But until then, I'm at loose ends. I would start cooking immediately. <laughs> Curry takes a while. So mostly the chopping. Chop, 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 chop. I'm still wandering around downstairs, trying to decide where to go, when I spot someone sitting on the grand staircase. Bradley? He's got his elbows on his knees and his chin in his hands, staring at the front door. Are you okay? Hmm. I grab the banister and swing myself around to sit beside him. What's up? I... I'm not feeling so great. Do you have a fever? I'm not sick. So what is it? Ah. <sighs> With all these dates, I had to be ready for anything. Because I didn't know how it would happen. Sometimes I didn't know if it ever would. But I could never give up. I'd planned for so long. If I stopped, I didn't know anything else to do. But you were right. You found the way to another world. Yeah, but it's the same thing. Huh? All my plans have run out. He must be feeling stir-crazy, only worse than me. He's worked so hard to get here, and now all he can do is wait. I hate being useless. I've always had so many goals, and I can never do enough. So, anytime I'm not working towards a goal, I feel guilty. I feel like the football team after the end of season. You never have time to stop, and then bang! It's all over. It's not over. You're just in... a... Uh, half-time? 
Is that the right word? I guess. Maybe that should be my goal for this morning. To entertain you. <laughs> oh my god, Bradley! <laughs> That's where your mind went? You're gonna do a halftime show? What's a halftime show? Never mind. I thought maybe we could find a game to play. I'm sure Nathaniel has something. Do you know where he is? Yeah. Don't look too excited or anything. Sorry. I'll go find him. You will? What about me? Ideas are your job. Fetching things is my job. Whatever. He walks off into the house. I suppose he's trying to be helpful, but it's not like wandering around this mansion is hard work. Sitting here waiting is more of a pain than helping him look would be. There's nothing to do here but stare at the door. After a few minutes, he returns and holds up a small leather bag fastened with a drawstring. What's that? Jacks. I've never played jacks. Aw oh, man, I used to play jacks all the time as a kid. I think the highest I could ever do was eight. That's okay. It's for kids, so it's pretty easy. He had some cars and board games, but they were all weird. I guess jacks are still jacks wherever you go. So, do you want to play? You don't have to. Oh, that sounds fine. What do we need to play? Just some space and a hard floor for the ball to bounce. Well, those spare bedrooms have plenty of open space. Alright. I mean, it's not like we couldn't play in the foyer. So, how does this work? Well, first we sit on the floor. Um, if you can. I've got leggings under this skirt, and it's not like you're trying to peek. What next? Bradley unlaces the bag and scatters a handful of many pointed gold and silver objects over the floor. A small red ball bounces free and rolls until he catches it. You bounce the ball off the floor, then quickly pick up a jack and catch the ball before it can bounce again. That sounds easy. Just wait. We take turns bouncing and catching the ball while scooping up the jacks. I'm not sure what the point of this is. I guess it's practice for learning how to bounce a ball. Now you have to pick up groups at a time, and get exactly the right number. No more, no less. That can't be much harder. Unfortunately, after a few tries of different groups, it turns out that it is. At least it is for me. Well, you have more practice. I'm not a boy, so I never played games like this growing up. Excuse you! I'm not a boy either, I played that game. Blech. Really? I thought Jax was a girl's, na a girl's name. A girl's game. My sister taught me. Oh. I guess I wouldn't know either way. I tended to be a loner at school. I mean, Jax is actually good if you're alone. Because you can play it by yourself. I know the games that we were forced to play together for gym class, but I don't always know what other kids did on the playground for fun. So, um, what's your sister like? Susan's great. I mean, she was probably the best big sister a guy could have. I thought she was horrible when we were little. She was so much bigger than me and really bossy. And she was always right. But as we got older, I realized she was kinda cool. Once she turned 18, she'd rent horror movies for me and stuff like that. She even snuck me some beer once. Wait, how old was she when she went missing? 20. So she shouldn't have been drinking either. Why does everyone ignore those laws except me? She didn't get me drunk or anything. It was just a little bit so I could say I knew what it tasted like. For the guys. For showing off. Kinda. She liked to party, but she was always careful. She never drank if she was driving. She was teaching me to drive too. I was 16. I was going to save up for my own car, and then... <sighs> Do you know what she wanted to be when she grew up? She'd be an adult now, she might have a job. I don't know. I guess I never asked. Nothing we can do about it now anyway. Dumb move, Janet. That's why we came up here in the first place, to play games and forget about our worries. So... Are you any good at volleyball? I've played. It's not my best sport. Why? 
How about Volley Sock? This is really a better idea with clean socks, but it's all about working with what you have. Dorm rooms aren't very big, so other students play keep up with a pair of socks while together. Of course, Bradley is far more coordinated than I am, and I miss the ball a lot as we stumble around the room and bounce off the walls. <laughs> then I hear someone banging on the bedroom door. <laughs> Alvin, outside? Do you two have to go at it like weasels? Keep it down in there. What's he talking about? He thinks we're having sex? Ew, gross. What? That's ridiculous. How dare he? How should Janet respond to Alba's accusation? <laughs> I think we could have some fun with this. <laughs> Oh, so, he thinks we're going at it like weasels, eh? Oh, Bradley! What? Oh! Oh, yes! What are you doing? I jump up and down a few times! This is better than I could have hoped. Oh my god, Janet! Harder! There's another thump at the door, and then incoherent mumbling moving away. Sounds like I drove him off. Stop that. What? He deserved it. What about me? What about you? I would never disrespect you or Nathaniel that way. Disrespect? Nathaniel? What? We're guests. It'd be rude to... Do stuff like that under his roof. Yes, but we weren't really doing anything. It was just a joke because Alvin was being a jerk. And if we were, if we wanted to, how would that be disrespecting me? If somebody were making you scream like that and people heard, it would embarrass you, wouldn't it? Of course it would. We can't even manage to talk about that between ourselves without getting flustered. If we got caught actually doing something, it would be awful. But we weren't caught. It was just a joke. It wasn't embarrassing at all because I was in control of what was happening. But Bradley wasn't. I guess that's true. I should have thought of that. Sorry, I'm so um, caught up in like making Albin feel stupid. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to embarrass you. I don't have any experience of dealing with boys, you know. It's okay. Storms come and go so quickly with him. Oh, it's kind of a nice thing. Say, do you like spicy food? What? Uh, sure. Why? I've got something planned for later. It rolls at the end of two days. It took me some time, well, yeah. But at last, dinner is ready. Nathaniel's kitchen didn't include ready-made curry powder or garam masala, but there were plenty of other spices that could be mixed together. I think that's more interesting anyway. Cooking is a bit like chemistry, except you're not supposed to make things explode. Good chutney is beyond me though, even if the right ingredients had been here, so that limits what dishes I can present well. My father would say that a good dinner party should have many different dishes available so that the guests can try a little of everything until they find something they like. If you serve only one dish and someone doesn't like it, it's a problem. Of course, if my father were holding a dinner party, he'd just have it catered, and then it's easy to have a wide selection. Both of my parents can cook, but if they had guests to impress, they'd be too busy with other things in the food. Anyway, what I've ended up with is spiced potatoes, vegetable biryani, and sweet fried bread. Nothing too, Outre. Is it done yet? I'm starved. Yes, come on in. The boys begin to filter in and take their seats. Lens tilts his head curiously, drawing in a long, slow breath of air through his nose and holding it for a few moments before exhaling. All right. Hmm. He doesn't say anything more. Thank you very much for preparing all this for us. Wait until you eat it before you say that. 
I know I'm not a bad cook, but I don't know what they like, either. Anyway, help yourselves. There should be enough. I dish some onto my own plate without waiting for anyone else. I'm hungry. Rude, girl. The others follow suit, a little more cautiously in some cases. Is there any meat in this? No. It won't hurt you to eat some vegetables. Unless someone has allergies they didn't tell me about. Vegetables are a side dish. I'm not forcing you to convert. I'm sure it will be fine. The meal progresses quietly for a bit as everyone samples the food. Despite what he said earlier, I'm not sure Nathaniel is enjoying the meal. He doesn't seem to be enjoy doesn't seem to be eating very much. But then I haven't been closely watching how he eats before. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Linz isn't eat eating very much either and chews each bite with slow deliberation. He's probably distracted. This is great. Don't talk with your mouth full. He just grins at me. So, um, how's the procedure going? What? The thing. With the force field? To overload it? Yes, that. He sets his fork on his plate. Everything is proceeding according to schedule. The stored charge continues to increase. It's hard to imagine needing so much power that it would take days to build up the charge. Short circuits burn out very quickly. They also have a distinct tendency to explode. Which might be entertaining to watch from outside the house. Even for you, that would be an expensive disaster. Certainly. I myself am irreplaceable. Uh, at least until you find a way to copy yourself. Can you do that in this universe? Not yet. And thank goodness for that. I know it's too soon for you to know, but if you do end up remaining here, do you have any ideas of what you want to do with your future? Well, I was thinking about becoming a doctor, but I don't know. I have an awful lot to learn about how things work here. You might also be able to discover future advances that you already know about. Isn't that cheating? Would you rather keep the information secret and let lives be lost needlessly? No, of course not. I can see it now. Dr. Baskar charges to the rescue, heroically performing unknown procedures on dying patients over the protests of her shocked co-workers, because there's no time to explain when lives are at stake. My parents would be so proud. Except that they would never know. In their hearts, they would. It's kind of you to say that. In their hearts, they'd probably believe I was murdered. They surely wouldn't believe I'd run away, not after last year. I've been making the best of things. I haven't given up. Not after last year. Hmm. What happened last year? Have I missed something? And if I had just run off... I'm not sure they'd be happy to see me back. Hey, Janet. Is there any dessert? I didn't make any, but there's still plenty of ice cream in the freezer. That'll do. Well, at least one person thinks my dinner was a success. Hands the guys who we're going after. One day, 22 hours. After dinner, I find a comfortable place to curl up with a book. Because this is a different world, every book here is something I've never read before. Combined with the size of Nathaniel's library, I could be busy here for ages. But in the long run, I know I'll start to miss my old favorites, the authors I can rely on and the books I read over again. Hey, Janet. Hi. Uh, thanks for making dinner. It was really nice of you. You're welcome. See, I thought I should do something nice for you in exchange. But it's hard to think of what I can do while we're stuck in here. That's okay, you don't have to. So, do you want a back rub? Huh? I'm pretty good at them. It's all I could come up with. Well... Okay. Bradley gets into place behind me and rests his hands on my shoulders. He has such big, strong hands. His thumbs start to work their way into my back, and... Ooh... Everything went blurry. He's right. 
He is good at this. I'm hearing, like, really nice music right now, too. I'm not hurting you, am I? No. Feels great. I'm... <laughs> You were worried about earlier, Bradley? Be careful how you're phrasing things. Gosh, make a girl blush. I'm going to go deeper. Let me know if I'm doing it too hard. Hmm. I think I needed this. I'm not very good at relaxing on my own. Where did you learn to do this? Youth group, mostly. Do you normally do this too? Ugh. Your dates? What? No. I mean... Well, you know. I know what? You know what I was doing with all those girls. All their nights out were as boring as mine. Was it that bad? Not bad. Just not good, either. But you never went further with anybody? Well, a couple of ladies got pushy, but nothing more than a kiss. He lets go of my shoulders. I couldn't get involved with anybody. If I had a real girlfriend, I'd have to give up on searching. If you'd had a real girlfriend, you could have told her the truth, and she could have gone with you on your search every week. What girl would believe my story? Besides, I don't know if this magic would have worked with just any girl. Maybe I needed you. There's nothing special about me. Sure there is. And, um, there's something you should know. What is it? I knew it. That's when you were, like, uncomfortable at that part in the conversation earlier. The car didn't really break down. I know. You know? I can put two and two together. You'd been looking for that mysterious house every trip. You knew where it was supposed to be, and you knew that normally there was nothing there. Finding that house was your whole purpose. You weren't going to let anything get in your way. As soon as I said I saw lights in the woods in the right place, you killed the car and made it so that we needed to investigate. So... you're not mad? I understand why you did it, but I don't think it was right. You spent so much effort searching, but I don't think you made enough plans for what to do when you found something. What if they had been murderers? What would have happened to me? And now that we've disappeared just like Susan did, will anyone know where to look for us? Did you leave any clues? No. I guess I'm just dumb. You're not dumb. You wouldn't have found your way here at all if you were. I spent so long on my game plan to follow Susan. But now I'm past all the goals I planned for. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm out of ideas. I'm not smart enough. You just need help with the planning. That's what partners are for. Okay, partner. What should we do now? That's a good question. I'd really like to know what Linz is up to in the basement, but we promised Nathaniel we wouldn't interrupt him. From the questions he asked us earlier, Linz has some knowledge of many different fields of science. He could be doing anything down there. I hope I'll get to find out when he's done. Well, Linz said he'd help us when he's finished here, but I think he's more interested in finding a wormhole than in finding Susan. So we should come up with ideas for that. It won't be easy, since she could be anywhere by now, and we don't know the best ways to search in this world. We should probably talk to a private detective, although it would be expensive to hire one. Also, there are little things we can do ourselves, like checking phone books or reading old newspapers for stories about finding a mystery girl. Or making posters to hang up around town. Do you have a picture of her? An old one in my wallet. We can have that photocopied and the poster can mention your name and maybe some details from our world that she would recognize. It's a long shot, but it's a start. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. <laughs>